Welcome back. For today's Business Matters, we have Don Ma here with us. Don, what's happening in the world of business today? Right, so let me start off with Google, actually, and here's what ha what's happening. More options coming to Google's App Store. A judge has ordered Google's parent company, Alphabet, to overhaul its app business to give Android users more choices to download apps and to pay for transactions within them. Now, this comes after Fortnite maker Epic Games won an antitrust lawsuit against Google last year. Meanwhile, damage from hurricane season also includes a tumble in the stock market. Uh, so precisely U.S. property and casualty insurance stocks tanked today as Hurricane Milton intensified en route to Florida. Now payouts over catastrophe level losses have increased over the past few years and have significantly hurt profits. Insurers uh, have been uh, leaving, uh, leaving high risk areas, that is, because of severe and frequent natural disasters. As well, the notorious ex-pharma CEO who raised prices 4,000% overnight is still on the hook for a $64 million penalty. The U.S. Supreme Court has rejected Markin Shrikrill's appeal. Uh, the penalty is equal to the amount he and his company made for hiking up the price of Darparim from $17 a tablet to $750. The drug is used to treat injection, infections rather, in pregnant women, babies as well, and people with HIV and others. He argued that he should not owe the entire penalty and that other federal appeals courts have limited liability of a defendant to personal gains. The Supreme Court upheld the, the penalty and, and his ban from the industry. The U.S. Supreme Court has also declined to hear a challenge brought by Uber and Lyft. The state of California is suing on behalf of drivers who signed agreements to keep legal disputes out of the courts and in private arbitration. It claims the ride-hailing companies owe money to drivers, saying that they were misclassified as independent contractors rather than employees. Most federal and state wage laws apply only to employees, making it much cheaper to hire contractors. Now, Uber, Lyft, and other app-based services have denied that they are employers to gig workers who benefit from the flexibility of contracting. And as the EU reverses course on its generous immigration policies, Sweden in particular stands out. The Nordic country known for openness has made a sharp pivot. Take a look at this. A decade ago, Sweden was open to helping refugees fleeing conflict. I will plead with the Swedish people to have patience with what is about to happen, to open their hearts to the very exposed people we now see around the world. Former Prime Minister Friedrich Reinfeldt asked the Swedish people in 2014 to take in traumatized Middle Eastern refugees. Remember the reports about people being executed because some claim that they have the wrong religion. Summary executions of people who are entirely defenseless. These are the kind of environments people are fleeing. He acknowledged there would be friction and substantial costs with the large number entering. Sweden let in over 160,000 refugees in 2015, according to public records. The country then immediately went into the opposite direction, imposing tight restrictions under new leadership. This is the best way to help the local Green Party politicians actually do something. Former Deputy Prime Minister Osa Romsen crying when making the announcement. Sweden's immigration numbers have been far lower ever since. Some say the restrictions are necessary as migrant violence has risen dramatic. Sweden was previously one of the safest countries in the world. It now has one of the highest levels of fatal shootings in Europe. Migrants also strain social services. Sweden, a country of 10 million, is known for its strong welfare system. But the influx of low-income migrants is perceived to be throwing that system out of balance. Swedes also report too many migrants have come in at once and failed to integrate with Swedish society. Sweden continues having strict immigration laws as more anti-immigrant politicians gain power in Europe. As well, EV maker Rivian is working to restart construction of its factory in Georgia. The U.S. Department of Energy says the car maker has applied for a federal loan, 
but it did not disclose the requested amount or the terms. Rivian paused construction of its $5 billion factory to prioritize production of its midsize R2 and to conserve cash. The car maker shifted production to its Illinois plant. Now Rivian is hoping to start partial operations at its Georgia facility by the end of 2027, with pro full production expected to begin the following year. Meanwhile, Panera Bread has settled its first wrongful death case surrounding its now discontinued charged lemonade. The suit said that Sarah Katz, who had a heart condition, died after drinking the highly caffeinated drink in 2022. The case claimed that the charged lemonade was sold alongside Panera's non or less caffeinated drinks. The law firm representing Katz family confirmed that the settlement uh, to media outlets, this is just one of four cases leveled against Panera over its drink. One other case involves a death. Uh, the two others uh, allege that the charged lemonade caused permanent heart issues. And a self-driving wheelchair, and they're taking some travelers to their gates at the Seattle Tacoma International Airport. Alaska Airlines is testing the new technology until mid-December, and the new service works with the airport's existing wheelchair service. Travelers go through traditional security with a wheelchair assistant, then the self-driving wheelchair takes them to their gate. The wheelchairs are programmed with automated routes that users can select on a touch screen. They're also equipped with cameras as well and sensors that can detect objects along the way. Once the wheelchair drops the traveler off at their gate, it automatically returns to its original location. Alaska Air says more than 1,500 travelers have used this new technology. Now, not many people associate the idea of locally produced goods with New York City, but one shop owner has spent the last two years walking over 40,000 blocks through over 200 neighborhoods across all five boroughs to build her online catalog of small local businesses. NTD Shaw Marshall has more on this curiously curated shop. Locavu, a word that means one who eats foods grown locally whenever possible. And this is the Locavore Variety Store in Manhattan, New York. An emporium of local goods all grown, baked, fabricated, assembled, crafted, concocted, sewn, stuffed, and pickled within 100 miles of New York City. The selection is curated by store founder Caroline Weaver. It's a shop that's all about shopping. Rebecca, a customer visiting from New Jersey with her family, said the idea of local goods is great for the city. I did read about it somewhere, but we did just bump into it, which was nice. Just something local that's new and fun and interesting, somewhere I can support. With over 700 products from over 130 brands, the store's got a creative assortment of a little bit of everything. And almost all of the products are made within 100 miles of New York City. It's a physical manifestation of Weaver's website, The Locavore Guide. Sort of like Yellow Pages, but for small businesses. The idea came to her a few years ago after she noticed that it was becoming increasingly difficult to find actual small businesses in the city through online search results. So she set out on a personal scavenger hunt to walk the entire city to find them for herself. Weaver believes shopping local is just as important for our social wellness as it is for the local economy. Sean Marshall, NTD News. Thanks for that report, Sean. Okay, quick recap of markets today. U.S. stock uh, stock indexes all in the red today, close lower, uh, while Treasury yields rose. And this comes as traders lower bets for Federal Reserve interest rate easing. Uh, they're also worried about the Middle East conflict's impact on oil prices. So while waiting for quarterly earnings uh, and fresh economic data, investors also brace for another big hurricane, Milton, as well investors continue to fret about how Israel would respond to Iran's missile strikes. Uh, besides next month's Fed meeting, investors are also waiting for the Consumer Price Index inflation reading for September and the kickoff of third quarter earnings season with reports from banks, uh, which both do this week. Now, just quickly, a big drag on the S&P here came from Amazon. After a Wells Fargo downgrade, Amazon's decline also pressured the consumer discretionary sector. And that's all the stories uh, in today's Business Matters. Uh, back to you guys, Carrie, Fiona. Don, last week you brought us robo-taxis. This time you've got robo-wheelchairs. So what, what do you think of these? 
So, I mean, it certainly has its uses in the airport, but what I would like to see is that technology transferred to a car. And hear me out here. <laughs> so I'm driving uh, to work and I can't find parking spot. What if the car can just drive itself to find a parking, stop, uh, a parking spot and I can just get off and go to work and not worry about that? Well, I think you bring up a very good point there. I think maybe you should go speak to those car manufacturers, Don. <laughs> I think uh, this is probably on their minds right now. Uh, I'll just keep that to myself for now. Valet parking, the feature you're looking for from your car. I like that. Robo-valet parking. Robo-valet, yeah. Thanks, Don. We'll see you back here tomorrow. All right.